Hello all. Today we are going to discuss research and citation. Specifically, we are going to gain an understanding of the different types of sources, discuss the seriousness of plagiarism, learn how to properly format a works cited page, explain the difference between quotations and paraphrases, and examine how to use in-text or parenthetical citations to cite our sources within paragraphs. Part of composing persuasive paragraphs is incorporating research into our papers through the use of citations. This process of research and citation is fairly complex. Therefore, before we begin this lecture, I want to give a brief outline of its content in order to help us conceptualize what we are discussing and where we are heading. We are going to begin with a discussion of different types of sources. We will then proceed to an examination of plagiarism and its significance. Once we understand the importance of properly citing our sources, we will discuss the two places where citation occurs within a paper, the works cited page, and in-text or parenthetical citations. Within the works cited page, we will discuss how to cite the most common sources, including journal articles, online newspapers and magazines, books, and websites. Finally, we will conclude this lecture with a discussion of the differences between quotations and paraphrases, and how to cite them within our paragraphs. Let's begin by discussing the various types of sources that are available. When researching, there are three different degrees or quality levels of sources that we may find. They are unreliable sources, reliable sources, and scholarly or peer-reviewed sources. As you can see, these sources are arranged from worst at the bottom to best at the top. Let's discuss each of these levels beginning with unreliable sources. Unreliable sources are the worst form of evidence. Currently, the most prolific source of unreliable information is the internet. While excellent and reliable information can be found online, the vast majority of websites are unreliable. All that is required to create a .com website is a computer and a domain name. Anyone can literally post anything regardless of its validity. Therefore, aside from a few exceptions, any website that ends in .com should be considered unreliable. However, the internet can provide some reliable sources as well, some of which are .com websites. First, there are many major news networks and financial companies that have .com websites that also provide useful information. The New York Times, The Washington Post, CNN, and financial websites like Bloomberg or Forbes all have information that would be considered reliable. You can also find reliable information on governmental websites the URLs of which will generally end in .gov. In addition to major news outlets and government sites, some reliable information may be found on organization websites as well. These usually end in .org. However, we must be careful using this information. Many organizations have specific agendas and therefore the information they provide may be inaccurate or taken out of context. Whenever taking evidence from a supposedly reliable source, we should always double-check its validity by cross-referencing the information with other reputable sites. Finally, in addition to reliable internet sites, you can also find reliable information in books, newspapers, magazines, and company records. However, as with .orgs, we should always check the validity of this information. Just because something has been printed does not necessarily mean that it is accurate. You can find books written by experts in the field, but you can also find books that discuss first-hand accounts of UFO abductions. Regardless of the source that you are using, it is important to be skeptical. Always verify the accuracy of your information, even if it's from a reliable source. The best form of evidence, however, are scholarly or peer-reviewed sources. Scholarly or peer-reviewed sources go through a rigorous vetting process by experts in the field before they can be published. An individual who wants to be published in a scholarly journal or by a university press must first submit the manuscript to a panel of experts in the field who evaluate the validity of the claims. The panel then either rejects the manuscript or critiques it and returns it to the submitter for revision. This process continues until the panel of experts agree that the manuscript's evidence, arguments, and findings are sound. Then, and only then, is the manuscript published. 
Because of this intense vetting process, scholarly journal articles and books published by university presses are the gold standard of evidence. These sources should be used whenever possible as they possess the most reliable information. By understanding the different quality levels of sources, we can ensure that we select the best information for our reports. Now that we have discussed types of sources, we will move on to a discussion of plagiarism and citation. One of the most important aspects of writing is distinguishing our personal words and ideas from those of other sources, such as journal articles, newspapers, magazines, and other reliable sources. Failure to clearly distinguish and give credit to the words or ideas of another individual is called plagiarism and can result in severe penalties, not only in an academic setting, but also in a job. If you are caught plagiarizing in an academic setting, you may receive a zero on an assignment or you may even be expelled from school. The consequences for plagiarizing during your career can also be dramatic. If you plagiarize a report while on the job, you can be demoted or even fired. Plagiarism is stealing. You would not walk into somebody's house and steal a computer. We should be just as horrified by taking the words or ideas of another person without giving him or her credit. In the remainder of this lecture, we are going to discuss how to give original authors credit through proper citation. Citing our evidence creates a link that joins our use of the information within our paper to the original source where we found the information. This link allows the reader to find the original source and validate whether or not we are accurately representing the information. Citing information within a paper is a two-fold process. First, we have to cite the source within a Works Cited page. In addition to creating a Works Cited page, we also need to distinguish our words and ideas from our source's words and ideas within our paragraphs of the paper. This is accomplished through the inclusion of in-text or parenthetical citations. In order to accurately incorporate outside information within our report, we must properly cite the source within both the Works Cited page and a parenthetical citation. Let's begin by examining how to properly cite a Works Cited page. Here we have a sample Works Cited page. Before we look at the specific citations, let's discuss the general formatting. If you are using any outside information within a report, you must include a Works Cited page at the end of the document. The citations should begin on a new page. In other words, don't begin the citations on the same page as the conclusion of your paper. The page should start with the words Works Cited. After the words Works Cited, we will have a list of sources that are used within the paper. If you use information from a source within your paper, whether it is a direct quote, a paraphrase, or merely a specific idea, you must, I repeat, you must have a citation for that source within your Works Cited page. Also, your Works Cited page should only contain sources that have been used within your paper. In other words, if you did not use a source within the paper, that source should not be cited within the Works Cited page. Please note that everything on the Works Cited page is double-spaced. Each source on the page is differentiated by the use of hanging indents. As you can see, the first line of each citation is left-aligned, while the subsequent lines of each citation are indented. Please note that the sources are arranged in alphabetical order by the first word of the citation, whether that word is the author's last name or the title of a text. Now that we have covered the general layout of the Works Cited page, let's look at how to cite specific sources within this page. As we previously discussed, peer-reviewed journal articles are the gold standard of credibility. Therefore, we should be familiar with the citation format of these sources. Let's take a look at the first source of this Works Cited page, which is from a scholarly journal. For scholarly journal articles, we will begin with the author's name. The author's last name is presented first. We then include a comma, after which we provide the author's last name. 
Finally, we end the author portion of the citation with a period. If the journal you are citing has two or more authors, its citation would look like this. Here, at the Chobatar Kali, all the subsequent authors' names are separated by commas. The subsequent authors' names are presented first and then last. Once we have provided all the author information, we then need to provide the title of the article. Before we give the article title, we include opening quotation marks. We then provide the article title itself. Generally, we capitalize all nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs in the title. We then include a period and closing quotes. After providing the article title, we then give the journal title. The journal title is capitalized normally and is given in italics. The journal title section is then concluded with a comma. The journal title is followed by the volume and issue number. You will include lowercase letters VOL followed by a period. and the volume number for that particular article. You will then include the lowercase letters NO, followed by a period, and the issue number. Commas separate the volume and issue number and end this section. The final portions of the scholarly source citation are the year of publication and the page numbers of the article. After providing the year of publication and a comma, we then abbreviate page numbers with PP period and give the all-inclusive page numbers on which the article can be found. Finally, we end the citation with a period. By providing this set of information in this order, we make it easy for a reader to find and validate the information that we are providing from scholarly sources. Before we proceed on to discussing how to cite books and websites, let's quickly examine how to cite newspaper articles as that process is very similar to a journal article. Here we have a citation for an online newspaper. For citing an online newspaper article or magazine article, there are only a few differences from the citation of a journal article. We will begin with the author information. We start with the author's last name, insert a comma, provide the author's first name, and then end the author section with a period. Once we have provided the author information, we then provide the article title. Before providing the title, we insert open quotation marks. We then provide the title itself, being sure to capitalize all nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. We then end the article title section with a period and closing quotes. Next, we provide the title of the magazine or newspaper from which the article comes. The title of the newspaper or magazine where the article was found is given in italics and followed by a comma. We then give the publication date for the article. We begin with the day the article was published, followed by the month. Please note that if the month is more than four letters long, we abbreviate it and follow it with a period. We then provide the year of publication. Finally, we end this section with a comma. Next, we provide the URL for the article. After providing the URL, we add a period. The citation then ends with the word accessed and the day month, and year that we accessed the article online. 
This citation is then closed with a period. Now that we have an understanding of how to cite journal articles and online newspaper and magazine articles, let's quickly look at how to cite a book. The formatting for a book is fairly simple. We start with the author information. We begin by providing the author's last name, followed by a comma, and then give the author's first name. We end this section with a period. Next, we present the title of the book. This title will adhere to the same rules as journal titles. That is, we will capitalize all nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. We will also italicize the titles of books. When we have given the title, we will end this section with a period. After the title, we will provide the name of the publishing company. It is important to note, if the publishing company has the word university or press within its name, we abbreviate these words to U and P respectively. We then follow the publisher name with a comma. We then end book citations with the year of publication and a period. We'll conclude our discussion of Works Cited paid entries with a discussion of how to cite a web page. Here we have a sample citation for a web page. Generally, a web page will begin with a web page's author. We will provide the author's last name, followed by a comma. We will then give the author's first name and end this section with a period. Once we have provided the author information, we will then provide the title of the web page itself. Before providing the title of the web page, we insert opening quotation marks. We then provide the title of the web page, being sure to capitalize all nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. We then end the web page title section with a period and closing quotes. It is important to note that there are times when you may not be able to find an author for a web page. In that instance, we begin the entry with the web page title, like this. After providing the title of the web page and its author, if available, we then provide the name of the web site. The web site's name is given in italics. Be sure to capitalize all nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs within this title. We then end this section with a comma. Next, we give the publication date. The publication date of the page will begin with the day, then the month, and finally the year. If the month is more than four letters long, abbreviate it. If you do not have the specific day or month a page was created, merely provide the information that you do have. For instance, if we could only find the year for this publication, we would merely insert 2019. If you cannot find any publication date information, merely leave this section blank. For this source, however, all the information is given, so we do need to provide it. The publication date section is then concluded with a comma. Next, we will provide the URL. The URL of the web page is given and then followed with a period. Finally, we provide the date that we accessed the article online. We type the word accessed and then give the day, month, and year that we accessed the web page. If the month is more than four letters long, we should abbreviate it. We will then end the citation with a period. While there are many other sources that can be used within a paper, having an understanding of how to create a Works Cited page for these common sources will give you a good foundation upon which to proceed with your research.